Uh, hello friends, I'm Dr. T and today we're going to focus on atrial fibrillation uh, part 4. On the first video we asked these questions, what is atrial fibrillation, how common it is, uh, what types do we have, what are the symptoms and what are the main causes of atrial fibrillation. On the second video we ask the question uh, why bother with atrial fibrillation and we said because atrial fibrillation puts a higher risk of having a stroke and we went over a scoring system called the Charles Vask scoring and on our third video uh, we addressed what to do if we find you are at higher risk for having a stroke from atrial fibrillation and we said there are five different medications and there is a potential device called left atrial appendage occlusion device that we could implant for people that could not tolerate the blood thinners because they've had a prior bleeding on the head or in the eye and again are not candidates for blood thinners. And today we're going to continue to ask another question. So why bother with atrial fibrillation? We already addressed the stroke and today we're going to address atrial fibrillation can damage your heart and it's called a tachycardia induced cardiomyopathy meaning you uh, weaken the heart muscle if your heart rate is going too fast for long periods of time and we're going to uh, answer what to do about it and how to treat it. As you know atrial fibrillation most commonly it in adults and can cause a rapid ventricular response meaning your pulse dramatically could increase and some patients could have a pulse rate, a heart rate up to 200 beats per minute or even higher in certain circumstances. And especially if you don't have a lot of symptoms, you could be left with this high pulse rate for days, weeks or even months. And this rapid ventricular response will damage your heart muscle, weakening and causing again what we call the tachycardia induced cardiomyopathy, meaning racing in the heart leading to weakness in the heart muscle itself that would lead to congestive heart failure and even puts you at risk of sudden cardiac death. And obviously there are other causes of uh, tachycardia cardiomyopathy like incessant tachycardia, extra beats, PVCs, if they are very frequent, uh, extra beats coming from the lower chamber of the heart called the ventricles, and even uh, if your pacemaker is not adequately programmed, it could cause a pacemaker mediated tachycardia, could potentially lead to, uh, again, a cardiomyopathy. Uh, here's an example of a fibrillation with a rapid ventricular response. But if you already have a heart condition, if you have a weakened uh, heart muscle and congestive heart failure to start with, atrial fibrillation will exacerbate your congestive heart failure, leading to symptoms of shortness of breath, uh, weakness, fatigue, and peripheral edema. Uh, the reason is because atrial fibrillation decreases the efficiency of your heart as a pump, decreases your cardiac output by about 20% due to the loss of the atrial contraction, what we call the atrial kick. It's very important in filling uh, the ventricles, lower chambers of the heart. Essentially what happens when you are in atrial fibrillation, the upper chambers, lower chambers of the heart do not work together. And uh, here you could see a vicious cycle. The fibrillation leads to cardiomyopathy, cardiomyopathy leads to congestive heart failure, congestive heart failure leads to more atrial fibrillation, you get into this uh, cycle. Well, it is a good idea to learn to take your pulse, count your heart rate for a minute and uh, see if it's more than 100. If you suspect that you're having racing in the heart, palpitations, pounding, uh, some people describe as your heart is getting out of their chest, pounding out of their, their chest, you need to see your doctor or go to the nearest emergency room uh, because they will uh, start the, the blood thinner to protect your brain and they give you the medications to slow down your heart rate. How to slow down your heart rate in atrial fibrillation? Well, we can give you IV medication called delta azam or IV bioblockers like metoprolol. We could start on the oral uh, medications, delta azam, verapamil, or other bioblockers, and it will bring your heart rate to uh, 100 or less. And if uh, a decision is made to proceed with a cardioversion, you need to have a transophageal echo, a uh, special echocardiogram where they pass a tube 
from your mouth into your stomach to look at the heart very uh, closely to make sure there is not a clot sitting on left tetrapanage that could dislodge and cause a stroke if they do a cardioversion. And here is an example of a clot inside the left atrium. Once you control uh, the heart rate, you controlling your symptoms, there is really no rush to proceed with cardioversion. Uh, we have now alternatives to put in a blood thinner and control your rate, bring you back in four weeks. And then if you're still in atrial fibrillation, then you could proceed with an electrical cardioversion. And uh, what it means is uh, they put patches across your chest, deliver a small electrical shock after putting you uh, asleep and resetting your heart to beating normal. Here's the good news. If you develop tachycardia induced cardiomyopathy and you control your heart rate down, uh, the heart muscle will recover in the next few weeks or months. It is reversible. Uh, but be aware if you get an EKG like your doctor's office uh, at rest, it's not enough to make sure your heart is under control. You need a holder monitor, a vent monitor, can monitor your heart throughout the day to make sure your heart rate is under control with your daily activities. And here's an example of a patient at rest and uh, taking the garbage out and the heart rate remarkably uh, increases. So your doctor may decide uh, again to get you back in sinus rhythm with medications or, or with electrical cardioversion. And uh, during electrical cardioversion, the doctor again will deliver uh, a small electrical shock across the chest to convert into regular sinus rhythm after it sedates you. So you should not have any pain. And when all said and done, if a decision has been made to leave you in uh, atrial fibrillation and medications cannot control the rate, you're still in spite of optimal medications, your heart rate is still going too fast. We can always ablate the AV node and uh, place a pacemaker, guaranteeing they will never have resting in the heart due to atrial fibrillation. And in this case, we are protecting your heart from the racing in the heart. However, number one requires a permanent pacemaker implant if you don't have one. Number two, it is irreversible. We cannot go back and reconnect this wire, so to speak. And very, very important, if you have a venoid ablation and a permanent pacemaker, you still need a blood thinner because you're not protected from a stroke. You still need a blood thinner. And in conclusion, uh, when we face an episode of atrial fibrillation, priorities are number one, protect your brain. Number two, we want to protect your heart from uh, deteriorating and causing a cardiomyopathy, because it's a heart failure. And number three, obviously we want to minimize your symptoms and uh, bring them under control. Your symptoms could be disabled. And remember, your health is too important to be delegated to others. Let's take control. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel, write a comment, ask a question. I plan to uh, publish these videos on the second and fourth Friday of each month. See you then.